Hi there, so welcome to tutorial two. This one is pretty much the same as tutorial one, the 2D pipe, but now we go into 3D work. Okay, so in the page here, you have the links to download the, the projects. So just to show you what you will find there. So first is you open the workbench. So after downloading everything, you will extract that in one directory and you will have fluid mesh case and workbench. So workbench, we set everything in workbench, geometry mesh, Okay, and then the Fluent is outside of the workbench. So in the case of the workbench, as you open, you will see that you have this one single geometry and see that what we have here, okay, so we have different meshes, okay? So using this method, I'm going to show you when doing the, the mesh, what, what is this mesh? So different Y plus values, and then we move to here, a fully unstructured mesh like we did in 2D, okay? So you will have several meshes, and see here that, again, as I mentioned here, you will have different meshes, okay? So each one will correspond for a different system. If you want to convert it to Fluent, remember that you can just drag and drop here and you will convert it. Uh, one thing is you want to, to know, for instance, you click here and then you go into properties. See that it's telling you that system ID is sys. So it's this one. So it's click here, for instance, this one. Let me click there here. Properties is telling sys2. So the mesh sys2 is the one that corresponds to this one. And same will be with fluent and everything. Okay, so that is how you explore. So this is what you have here. So we're going to, to address this one to create the, the geometry. I'm going to use in this case a space clean. And also with, with, with the same model that you don't have it here, but I will put it. And then when you look at the case directory, what you're going to find here in Fluent Mesh, see that you're going to have different setups. So laminar, turbulent, and turbulent fully instructed mesh. So this two is the, this the, the suit type mesh. So as you enter, you see that you have different Y plus values. You have the difference. And inside, you already have the solution. This is the output of the data. Recall that we do the sampling. And this case here, Y plus one, this one is compressible flow. So we hit the, we put some, some temperature at the wall. So we have a heated wall just to show you how to run compressible that pretty much nothing's changed, but just to show you. Same turbulent fully, fully instructor, you have two Y plus. So this is what would the data structure that we have. So what we're going to do, and let me show you now the case here, the case presentation. So pretty much it's the same. And what we're going to do now is fully 3D, okay? We're not going to use any symmetry, but it's up to you if you want to run later using symmetry or whatever. So we have here the 3D domain, a cut plane in the middle, then in this location where I'm going to sample. And just to remind you how to do this sample. So here we're, I'm going to show you how to do the sample outside of uh, of Fluent, okay? Previously we, we did it in Fluent, now outside of Fluent, which is the way I prefer, okay? So I use my Python no, uh, scripts to do that one. But just to remind you how to do this sample, you will need to find a location in your domain Okay, so in this case, see here, I'm going to, to sample in this location. You have a line normal to the, to, the, to that location, and then you do the sample. So you compute Y plus, shear velocity, and you plus in this way. Okay, remember that also you do the sampling when the flow is fully developed and there is no separation, okay? And you have here, okay? So see that in this case, you have incompressible and compressible the comparisons, so, okay, of both. Physics. So see that it's only slight deviation here, but everything is due to, to the mesh, but the important thing is that we should be able to reproduce you know, a similar behavior for all the cases. So basically here you, you have the steps to, to do the, the, this plot here. So the first thing is that you, you, you will choose a location where you sample the wall shear stress. So you put it here, and then in this location also you plot a line normal to the surface. So this will be the line. And then you sample velocity along this line. Okay, this line must be normal to the wall location where we sample the shear stress. So this would this location is the origin of coordinate, zero, zero, zero. So when you measure <coughs> distance, this distance normal to the wall, this distance starts from zero, zero, zero and goes zero, one, zero, two, zero, three. Okay, this is very important. So you will need to put this point origin of coordinates. Then after having that one, compute Y plus, U plus, plot U plus in function of Y plus, and remember that this axis is log logarithmic, okay? It's very straightforward, okay? So you just need to do sampling here, put a line normal, and then you get, you, you have all that information. So here you see the comparison between the turbulent 
and laminar case. So here we, you have the profile, the laminar profile, the throwing profile with some analytical approximation. So we have a very good agreement. So just important, this is fully 3D, so I sample in a location here. So you can choose where you want to sample, okay? Then here we plot uh, the comparison of velocity profile using different measures. So see here that we have different measures and relative good agreement. And here we see better, we can see the location of the first cell center. So see here that this is Y plus more than 30. Okay, okay, here no no boundary layer meshing, boundary layer meshing. Uh, this is pretty much in both a layer and less than one. Okay, so see the each circle here correspond to a cell center. Okay, so you see the difference here. And now when we plot, in this case, this is the laminar case, we plot, we do this Y plus U plus uh validation okay this is basic verification see that we have a good agreement here in the the laminar region so see here that here it will deviate a little bit but this is not a problem the important thing is that you should have this agreement we know there is a, a laminar flow and here there is a lot of discussion now where is the beginning and the ending of this uh, viscous layer. So we have said that it's Y plus five. Some people say three, some people 10. But generally speaking, see that when you plot this one, you should be able to reproduce this one. And we see that this in this verification that we have a relative good agreement, okay? So this deviation here that we see here, this is basically due to the mesh. So as you get much, much finer mesh, you will just add that here to this line, the, the laminar one. So now we move to the turbulent case. Again, pretty much here, you see the same stuff that we saw previously for the mesh. But now here we plot the velocity profile, different velocity profile, different meshes. Okay, so see that very different profile from the laminar one. And here you see the location of the first cell center. Okay, and what is important when we're talking about when using wall functions is that we need to concentrate, we need to resolve the velocity profile. So you need to concentrate at least five cell centers to resolve that yeah, you see here. So if you put here like two or three, you are not resolving that. And see, actually in this case here, we are missing accuracy, okay, we're deviated. So this is the case where we don't have the, the inflation layer. And see that you have that different, that probably pretty much doesn't seem to be much, but when you quantify, this can account for more than 20%, okay? So you have to be careful, okay? And then when we plot, the y plus y plus so we we here we we recast the classical plot so see here wall functions okay and then you are here the logarithmic the, in the lo lo logarithmic uh region and then you have here the one world resolver so there is this small deviation okay this is due to the mesh okay it's not a problem but it's important that we we need to 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 be able to to reproduce these these plots the the analytical plots okay uh, and then we move here and we compare incompressible and compressible. Okay, so remember when you normalize everything, you should get same results. And what is important that, remember that in compressible, we can use the, the Reynolds number to control the whole flow. But when you go to com uh, compressible, you cannot use the Reynolds number. It's not the only control parameter. So here you need to take the actual physical properties of the flow. Then you are going to have a different velocity. So for this same Reynolds number that was 100,000, you need to have for the compressible flow, you see a very large velocity, 17.5. And the previous case that we, in compressible that we use, dynamic similarity, it's just velocity of one, okay, you get that, that, that Reynolds value. But at the end of the day, so this we have in dimension, but normalizing everything, see so that you get same values. So all these previous plots that I show you is classic verification. So this is something that you do when you, you don't have idea what is happening, okay, a new case. So you do this Y plus U plus plots, okay? So remember, independently of the geometry, flow properties, and inlet velocity, you should be able to reproduce these theoretical profiles, okay, of U plus versus uh, Y plus. Uh, of course, there are a few sections, okay, later when we go into, deep into, into the theory, so far we only have scratched the surface. We're going to see that there are some, some sections when you have pressure gradients, okay, or check wave. Uh, there are a few exceptions, but pretty much you, you are going to have similar beha behaviors, in particular in the, in the viscous layer. Just a reminder again that you do you should do this sampling where the flow is fully developed. Okay, so apart from from, from the previous plots, you can do also these plots as shown and as we did in the in the tutorial one. No y plus uh, uh, versus 
Turbulent kinetic energy, turbulent dissipation rate, uh, Y plus distribution at the walls, so you can do it in 2D, 2D and 3D. 3D would be the plot on the surface. In 2D, you can get it in a line corresponding to the wall. Okay, you can plot also laminar turbulent shear stresses along a line. Pretty much, you, you use the same line that you use for the U plus, Y plus, and all this okay and also then for instance in this case in the pipe that we have a lot of data so you you can get the friction coefficient correlations and compare okay so this is part of this validation and verification and just to end up here just to show you that here we have the plots of uh, true and kinetic energy dissipation rate uh shear laminar shear turbulent shear okay um velocity magnitude in function of y plus this is done in fluent okay so also you can do it in fluent but as i mentioned i prefer you see that you can get some pretty plot pretty pretty pre plots using python or whatever you use but also you can do more stuff but also you can do it here i will show you the files so this is the case presentation okay so then in the next video we're going to start to do geometry meshing and then setting up so thank you for your attention and see you in the next video bye